Okay. So we got everything set up. You guys got Hyper-V installed. You did Night-Night. So now we need to do a couple more tweaks to it. So if we're going to be doing virtual machines, <laughs> we need to make sure we have room for it, right? And we didn't. We need 32 gigabytes of hard disk space per installation. So we're going to check and we know we don't have 32 gigs. So we're going to add another hard drive to this. So and like I just said, you're just watching and then you're going to do it after just like before. So we're just taking a look. So we have a 48 gigs that we gave this originally, but we need 32 gigs per Hyper-V that we're going to put on here for room. So we need to make sure we have that. So there's one other thing that we need to do before to do that, but we're just kind of taking tally of what we have to work with here. So we can go to system. System information will give us some extra stuff here. So this tells us what version we have. It knows that it's a VM because it says VM incorporated in here for manufacturer and model of the computer. Uh, our processor, we have four cores on our processor. That's, that's what we told it, one and four. Uh, going down, going down. We have 16 gigs. So that should be more than enough for just doing Windows 10 exercises. So we don't need to mess with that right now. What we do, what we're going to have to do is add some virtual memory to this so it can handle waiting for the hard drives to do stuff. So that's something else we're going to do is we're going to mess with the virtual memory and we're going to give it three times this worth of virtual memory. So three times 16 worth of virtual memory. Uh, typical, you'll do like two and a half times, but since I know this environment's a little bit taxing, it'll help it. And we'll just add that onto our hard drive that we add to these. Hopefully we don't run out of hard disk space by doing this today. So we need at least, uh, we have a 32, probably do two, we'll be doing two Windows 10, so 32, 32, 64, and then probably that on top. So probably 100, 120 something, we'll do about 120 gigs of hard drive. We can always change it later for our extra hard drive. So let me close that. So there's one thing you might notice, this screen doesn't change size, right? You tried? Well, if we go up the VM up here, we tell it to install VMware tools. This is gonna give it so it communicates better with the actual hardware or the, pretty much the KVM that we're using to connect to, our remote connection to all this stuff. So that should have put something in the disk drive. I can probably go straight to it before it pops up down here. right there see it popped up as i clicked on it i win you lose computer all right so this is going to give it the drivers to properly communicate with the host and everything so just need it to pop up for me come on you can do it i know i clicked it here let's do it again there's nothing like double clicking thing over and over just make it angry that makes it work i'm gonna say complete so just uh, don't need to worry later if i need to install anything and this will actually give us our graphics what will adjust to our screen so we can have it larger or smaller and it will need to restart Surprised the screen hasn't flickered yet. Finish. You need to restart. Yes, I understand. I'm restarting. All right, so I'm restarting it. When it comes back on, I should be able to make this full screen now. Like a real full screen, not a size down safe mode screen size. That's really annoying on a big 4K TV. Let me in, let me in. And you should be able to go up to view now and go fit guest now. Now it's full screen.
Well, you're not supposed to be doing it right now. So it doesn't matter. All right. So now that we have that, we know we need the hard drive. So the hard drive is easy. We can come up to file. <laughs> VM, not file. Go to settings. And I'm just going to go to add, and I'm going to add a hard disk hard drive. And I think I said 120, so we'll do 120. That should be enough. It says it wants to do a SCSI, create a new one. I'm going to do 120 gigabytes on this. And I'm going to tell it to allocate the space now. This is where our virtual machines are going to go. And it's cool just leaving it like that. It just says dash zero. Remember zero is one and one is two. Uh, we'll go finish. And then OK. Now, it's not going to show up instantly because that drive has not been set up yet. So. I come over here to the file explorer you will see it does not show that there's a hard drive attached just the one I flipped it twice so there's just the c drive and the dvd drive and that's because we actually have to set it up so i'm going to go to disk management all i am is right clicking right here on the start menu going up to disk management And then it, it sees it automatically. So we have master boot record and guided partition tables. Uh, can anyone tell me what the difference between the two of those are from your A-plus class? Well, I hit OK on here. Now that it's online, it needs to be formatted. Now we have probably three options. We're going to do the REF, the resilient file system here. Is it self-maintaining? I'm going to call this a V for a virtual. And right here, I'm just going to put VM for the label. And then right here where it says NTFS, I'm going to change that. Oh, it's not going to let me do it today. Huh. All right, well, we'll do NTFS today on it. Usually I do that REFS, but it's not popping up today. I'll figure out why that's not working right now later. We'll just do NTFS. NTFS is just fine, but REF is self-maintaining, so you never have to do any checks or, or anything on it. So Now we have it right here. Might have been because I told it to use the full amount when it created the system. So. But I'll check later. So now we have a place to store our virtual machines. So by default, it would, would store your virtual machines in Hyper-V under, not Windows, under Users, Public, Public Documents, Hyper-V. So this is where by default it would store stuff. So right here is that long way to where the hard drive is, where it stores your virtual disks and all your information. We're going to change that. So I'm going to go to the Hyper-V really quick. I don't want it to save it on the C drive because if we start putting everything on the C drive, we're going to run out of space and then nothing's going to work. Once we max out that C drive, our operating system doesn't want to turn on. So we don't want to do that. So we're going to come up here. This is the name of our computer right now. We'll go change that in a, in a bit too. I forgot to do that. So we'll go right click and we see we have Hyper-V settings. We're going to click on Hyper-V Settings. So this is your actual server. This is your manager. So it's the default location, it wants to save on, this, on the C drive. But we're going to save everything on the V drive. So we're just going to change that C to V. And I'm going to hit Apply. If this is blue, it means it hasn't done it yet. We always do Apply and then OK when we're done. We also need to change the virtual machine. So that was the hard disk location. I'm going to change the virtual machines, the data for it. I'm just going to delete that C and make that a V also. Makes it quick and easy. I don't have to do anything fancy, and I'll hit Apply. 
And there's one more thing we want to do. We have enhanced session down here. So it says use enhanced session mode. Okay, that's what we want. And right here, looks like they're both turned on. So that's good. Sometimes these aren't turned on. So you'll have to turn them on on your virtual machine. What that does is it allows you to connect with a remote desktop connection instead of a regular connection. And then you can resize it just like we just did with the VMware where we installed the drivers. That allows that to take place. So it looks like there's nothing else here we need to play with. So I'm going to hit OK. And we, what we did right now is we just changed the storage location where it wants to save virtual machines when we create them. So I will close that. So another thing we need is to fix virtual memory, especially since we're in a virtual machine. Sometimes we'll bottleneck at RAM just because we're virtualized. So the way stuff's being handled is through software and a little bit of hardware chopping up like it's a piece of pizza or a piece of pie. We just need to make sure we have a good uh, delay in between there so we don't lose information and stuff starts crashing on us. So the way we get to that is through our system properties. So I'm going to hit the Windows key, hopefully. I'll just click on it. And I type SYS. And that should bring up the system one. I want the blue checkbox. I'm going to delete that for a second, see if it's going to give it to me. Of course, you're going to be like this, aren't you? All right, we'll go through control panel. Sometimes it'll show it, sometimes it won't. Just make sure it looks like. Yep, I'll go through control panel. Screw it. So usually it's a little window like that with a white checkbox in it. You'll see it in a second. So I'm going through control panel to get to it. System and security. So this one right here, that's what I was looking for. That should have popped up, but it wasn't. So I'm going to click on system. And we're going to this advanced settings right here. So in advanced, we're going to have our memory allocation and everything. So coming over here. So we have performance, user profiles, and startup and recovery. Today, we're just going to mess in this performance one, visual effects, processor schedule, and memory usage, and virtual memory. We're going for the virtual memory. So I'm just going to do this and I'm going to say on this first screen where it says visual effects, I'm going to say adjust for best performance and I'm going to hit apply because I, I want this to run as fast as possible because we have so many people using the same hardware that anything we can do to shave off some speed, we're going to do it. So if I come over to advanced, we have processor scheduling. It's either for programs or background services. So on a workstation, you want programs on a server, you want background services. So. We're going down the virtual memory. By default, it says Windows isn't managing this and Windows sucks at managing it. So we're gonna turn that off and come over to a custom size here, right? And just to make sure my head works right. We have 16 gigs, right? So 16. We have 48 times 120. Why is my mind going blank? So we'll give it 49.15. Well, 49.152. Ah, number lock. We'll just give it an initial, just a flat 1600. And make sure I put V drive when I'm doing that. <laughs> uh, v drive has the room. And I'll give the real number one sec. There we go. That's our virtual memory. And it says, so some of you, when you do this, this may or may not pop up. For these changes to take effect, you need to restart the computer. Some of you won't pop up. This Windows isn't very consistent. So we will need to do that anyways. If it does or doesn't pop up, make sure we restart the computer. This will you'll notice that it will run faster after we've done this. So I'm going to go OK and OK. And I'm going to let it restart. So that's my virtual memory that we just changed. So. Think of that of like kind of like your uh, your cache, your level one, level two, level three cache. We're using this kind of as a software cache.
for our memory. So just in case we get bottlenecked somewhere, it's sitting there in an actual file waiting to go into our cache and go into our processor and get processed. That's the whole point of doing that. Uh, if you're if you do mining with video cards, you need to do that if you have a lot of cards, because a lot of times it'll try to boot them all up at the same time and it'll crash. But if you set your virtual memory, you can boot like 16 video cards at one time on one system. Okay, next I'm going to change the name of the computer. So I'm gonna come over here. And then maybe it'll work this time. Give me my sis. Come on, come on, come on. No, why don't you love me? There it is. And over here, when I come into this, so if you have a newer version of Windows 10, this is going to look completely different. So it's they got rid of this whole system here in 20H2. So let me just show you that really quick so you know whether you're working on your computer or on our computers. I'll minimize that. And let me just get this. You don't need to see my desktop icons. So if I go to it here, you see it says the same thing, but when I click on it, it comes here. So in older ones, in older versions, we'll go to this in there later when we're doing the Windows 10 stuff, but in older ones, you had to come down to system information, which actually took you to system properties. So it was all messed up and they didn't know what they're doing. But the same options we're going to are right here on the newest versions of Windows 10. So just wanted to show you that. You might be on your real computer if it looks like this. So I'm gonna go back into the virtual machine Oh, geez, that's a way to get lost. There we go. But this is how it is on all previous versions prior to 20H2. So I'm going to go to change settings, and it will go to this exact same spot, too. Once you click on those links on the right side, it's going to open up system properties, which used to be system information is what they called it, but it was still actual system properties, and system information was the first one I showed you guys. So Microsoft sucks at coding and making sense of stuff. So in here... First tab is computer name. We have hardware, advanced, system protect, and remote. This is where you're going to live in a lot of your, your use certified labs. You're going to do everything right here. So for today, I'm, we're just going to go to change the computer name. Now, every single one of you are probably going to do this. This is not change computer name here. This is computer description right here. Computer description. So when you're doing this, read what's in front of you. We're going to go here. To rename this computer or change its domain or work group, click change. So we're going right here. Right here's the computer name. I want you guys to put AM and then your initials. So mine's SLS. When I do this, it's going to ask me to restart my computer. This way I want to look at you on the network. I know who's who. But once again, I've got to restart the computer. We got a whole bunch of restarts computers doing this whole process, right? Now when we open up Hyper-V, it should have your, should say AM dash your initials now if you've done renamed your computer. See right here, it says AM-SLS. So that's going to be whatever your computer name is that has the server. So I'm just going to make sure really quick that this is still functioning after all these changes. So I'm just going to create it really quick and make sure it turns on. I'll just hit finish as soon as it lets me. Just like we did when we first installed Hyper-V, I'm just making sure our system is still functional. 
and I'll just say connect and then I'll turn it on. You can see it did an automatic checkpoint back here. So it looks like it is working. We connected to it. I'm just going to power that off. Just think of these as KVMs, keyboard, video, mouse. And even if you just do this, it's still running. You have to actually turn it off. Turn off. And then I'm going to delete it right here. And that folder that we created, well, not that we created, but that drive we did, it should actually be sitting right there. See? Users, public, documents, Hyper-V, virtual hard disk, right there. Remember, you can also just come over here to edit disk, browse, and just say, hey, bye-bye. So going the long way. And now it's gone. All right. And it's sitting right there in the recycle bin. All right. So one more thing that we want to do is we want to create our user accounts on here. So the way we do that on a local computer is don't don't go through here and create a user account. Don't don't don't, don't do this. Don't go eh, user and then make a user from here. Don't do that. All right. Right click here. We're going to go to computer management. Obviously, there's people doing stuff on their computer right now because it's making this one run slow. Even though I said not to. All right. So, computer management's where we have like pretty much all our tools to do everything. We got our share folders, event viewer, local users and groups. And you see when you right click over here, that's a lot of the same things that are right here. Uh, power options, event viewer, system, device manager. So a lot of all those tools are all also in this one tool here. So this is a snap in of computer management. We're going to go to local users and go to users. And this will be all the users on your computer. So by default, there's the one that we just created, which is it'll be named whatever that we named it when we created it. Everyone should say admin. Then there's ad administrator, default account. So this is whatever account you make is going to be based on this default account here. Guest and WDAG utilities account. This is for management. So you're not going to be using that for anything in these courses. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to right click and say new user. And you're going to fill in your information. So I'm going to do mine. And apparently I have cap locks on. In my classroom, I ripped cap locks out of all the keys, all the keyboards. There's no cap locks in my classroom. Administrator. I'm the administrator of my computer here. And then you can put whatever password you want for yourself. It doesn't have to be the server123. This is so you lock up your personal stuff on here. If something goes wrong, we can always come in through admin. This is just to keep you uh, used to using you. Then when you're doing screenshots, we know that you've done it. And this will be two screenshots we're going to do to turn in the day. So I'm going to go... And then if you're doing this for other people, you can say user must change password at login, but you're doing this for yourself. So I'm, I would just say password never expires. This is just for practice for us and good to go. So I'm gonna hit create. It's gonna create that user. And I'm gonna hit close. Now, that user, even though I said administrator, it's not actually an administrator yet. So if we come up to administrator up here and go to properties, we actually need to be a member of Administrator's group. So we need to go to our user account that we just created. We're going to go to Properties and say Member of. And we need to say Add Administrator's. And then do Check. Now it says My Computer Name and Administrator's. So if I hit OK on that, I'm good. I can hit Apply and then OK. 
Now, when I log in, I have permission to do stuff on this, and it's not going to ask me for a password for every time I want to do something. So once that's done, I can close this out, and I'm going to restart. Well, I'm not going to start. I'm going to sign out and then sign into that account. Okay. I'm going to go right here. Hey, you. Sign out. I could have just clicked on the other one, but I want to sign out of this one first. Now you see over here in the bottom left hand corner, I got the admin account we created and the one I just created for me. Now it's going to create this account because it didn't actually have an account created until I log into it. So now Microsoft's going to tell me, don't worry, everything's going to be okay. We're getting everything ready for you. I'm still going to make a video of this screen right here with just some inappropriate sounds in the background. Some screaming, chainsaws, you know, make it ready for Halloween. You've all heard that one before, right? All right. All right, here we go. Ooh. 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 I don't give nothing for free. Now I have my account. Now you might have to redo your home page right here because now you're on your own account. But feel free. This is yours. You can customize your desktop if you want. Do what you want in here. Think of this as your, your like if you went to the school, this is the computer we'd set you at. If you're sitting down at this computer. This is your computer. Let's see, did I miss anything? Let's do how to turn in an assignment. So I'm going to cheat. I always forget what that is. I don't want to type it. I don't type very well. Chrome, make Chrome home. I'm a cheetah. And I was going to steal that right there. Why doesn't it give me the icon? How rude. How rude. Anyways. Any fat fingers? No fat fingers? Okay. I'll just do stay signed on on mine. Log in. And go to our happy class. Yeah, you can save it. I don't care. It's not like it's my teacher account. Because it's a new user account the other one we did on admin so that's what we're doing again is setting it all right and if you guys noticed i put the youtube at the top here and <laughs> as you might notice i was getting frustrated because i tried doing it as an announcement and for some reason it wasn't working as an announcement so I was like, you better work this time Pulp. that's not towards you that's towards this link working i was getting angry at it Click on it, it has the video in there. It has actually the playlist. You click on it, it'll take us to the playlist. All right. So Apparently audio works through this, which this is weird. This isn't in here. We're just gonna get All right, so audio works through our virtual machine. Interesting, because it says it doesn't. It says audio does not work through remote connections, but obviously it does. All right. Yeah, if I go up to it up here, go to VM and settings. 
Sound is not supported over remote connections. <laughs> Apparently it is. All right. So again, I was just adding this. You can add this as your homepage. I just dragged the icon to the desktop on this one. Uh, not sure what this is going on right here. Oh, you guys can't see that. that doesn't exist for you. That just exists for me. All right, coming on down, 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 down. We've got how to submit an assignment. So we're going to do that right now. I don't believe, did I actually have anything to actually do for that? Yes, file upload. Okay. So we're going to create a template. Minimize this for a second here. So we have open office. So I'm going to open open office really quick. And this is just very, very basic, very simple. Hopefully this still says, says the default format. And I'm going to double check it because I don't know if it will or not. If not, we know how to do it. We've done it once. Oh, not customized. Go away. Go away. My finger twitchy. Nope. All right, so you're gonna have to go in there and change that again. It's okay. Practice is practice. Practice makes perfect. Microsoft Windows 98, 2000, well, 97, 2000 XP. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna go into a document and we're gonna create the template. So at the top, I'm just gonna center this. And right now, I'm, I just want the course at the top. The course that, you're in, that you, we are in is what we'll put at the top here. So in our case, it's just intro, we'll just call it intro to Microsoft. So it's supposed to be intro to computers, but we're using it to get ready for class. Unless you guys want to go over basic uh, A plus stuff for five days. Intro to Microsoft, I'll underline it and I'll bold it. And then let's make that bigger so we can actually read it. Let's go with uh, 20, 20 work, 20 works. All right, so I'm just going to hit enter, go down one more. Now I'm going to line this left, and I'm going to take this back down to like a 12 or something. And I'm just going to do my name. <coughs> I don't need that underline or that bold on there, so let me get rid of that. The date, date is very easy. I'll just go insert. Field, I can say time, date. So I'll just do date and it'll automatically fill that in for me. And then the assignment is what I would do on the bottom here. So I'm just going to say, show you how bad I can spell. Yeah, but I can, I can do this. I can do this. Look, look, it was never spelled wrong. Never spelled wrong at all. You didn't see that. And so for this one, we're going to be how to. Ah, I still did it wrong. Ah, that's why I don't type. I don't type. How tots turn in. Oh my gosh. There we go. Are we safe? Are we good? How to turn in an assignment? <laughs> uh, don't be me. Be you. I literally just lost control. My control key just flew off my keyboard. So I just lost control. I have a little bit of control left. It's on the right hand side. Stupid game and mechanical keys. If you barely hit them, they go thing. <laughs> All right. Hot. Jeez. Still not spelling stuff right. How to turn in an assignment. Even if it's spelled wrong, something's wrong there, you know. You put how to turn in an assignment right here. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over here. So everything that you possibly need is going to be in here to do your homework. So when we go to operating system fundamentals, that's what we'll have on the top here, operating system fundamentals. That'll be the next course we do, your name, 
change the date to the date you worked on it and then the assignment is what assignment is this what what am i looking at and you're more than welcome to make that look fancy or however you want make that look cleaner it doesn't bother me at all you can do that if you want it doesn't matter just as long as i have that information so when i'm clicking through it i see whose it is because at the end of the class i have to download download all this everything that you've turned in for records you know so if you don't put your names and stuff on it, I can't give you credit. Even though it's in Canvas, I have to be able to download it and actually store it. So, which is not fun because it just downloads everything into a zip file. So pretty basic, right? And we can, I mean, you guys can make this fancier, nicer. That's basically all I'm looking for. And then I'll have a requirement. I might have, I want your screenshot. So in this case, screenshot and We've done your user account. So what we can do is I can come up here and I can see that you did it. So we can come, I'm gonna right click here and I'm just gonna go to com computer management. This is also gonna tell me you know how to get to it. Local users and groups, users. And I should see your account in here, right? So I'm gonna move this over. I know your screens are different sizes. This doesn't actually have to be in the screenshot. I'm just moving this over really quick. So I'll just minimize it. And then all you have to do now, there's different ways you can do this. We can use the print screen button. We can use the windows S button. We can do a different ways to get to it. I'm going to show you the easy way. Just come to your right hand corner here to your system, uh, your action center right here. And if you see right here, there's an expand. If you click on expand, you have more tools here, VPN stuff. We're going to just get used to using the screen snip tool. There's two versions of this. This is the newest version. So this screen snip tool should pop up and we're always going to use the full screen one. So you see right here, it's got the full screen right next to the X. We're using that one always. Why? Because it does your time and date on the bottom right hand corner. So that also says, Hey, I did this at this time. This is when I did this screenshot. Now when it's in there, you can open it. So it'll show it over here. You can open it. And if there's stuff that you wanted to point out, you take like the highlighter and you can like highlight. There's, there's what you're looking for right there. I can go copy again right there. I don't actually have to save this, but you can, I'd recommend you here. Let me just do best practices. So we can go save, we can go to documents. And we can create, well, here, we can use right here for a new folder and just say, spell it right this time, don't care. All right, assignments. And then here you would just say, I can't. We, we've, we've come to the conclusion that Sean cannot type, right? And then we're going to save that in there just so you have a backup copy of it. It should also be on my clipboard right now. So when I flip back over to here, I'm going to hit enter and hit control V and it should paste it. It should, unless, unless it got mad at me. Hey, computer, what's going on here? I'm trying to show people stuff and you're not being nice to me. like it's not copying it there it is so sometimes it acts stupid and right now is one of those times so when this is acting stupid like that I think I told you guys the other day that sometimes when you use an open office when you try to paste in it there'll be a little glitch it's doing it now I can go grab that file that I just saved and dragged it in here but if you don't want to be saving backups like I just showed you we can go into paint is it is it is on the clipboard it is sitting there and if i just do control v it's going to do it now if i just do control c again come over here control v it's actually going to work so i don't know why it does that i prefer it not to be pinched like that that's pretty funny but that's easy to fix you just drag it up and resize it so there's little workarounds for everything that could go wrong now, it shouldn't have been all goofy like that, so I'll just do it one more time to see. I'm going to close that. 
I don't need to save it because we already have it saved in the documents. So that first PNG one is just sitting here in documents right here. So if I come over here, assignments, it's right there, how to turn in. And I could just take that and drag it over there just in case it didn't take to the clipboard. So everything's right there just in case. So it should though, when you do screen snip, if you don't want to do any changes to it, you should be able just to do full screen, come over to it. And just because I'm showing you, it's going to act stupid. Then if I do control V, it worked that time. So see. So sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. It might have just doesn't like me making that little color change. I don't know. But it should have worked because obviously I pasted it in the paint and it worked just fine, right? So. But for us, I just want to see that. So your first screenshot's going to be that you have uh, your username, that you created your username in here. Now, now that's good enough, yeah. We'll do one more. So this will be, we'll call this, this is the how to turn in an assignment and then we'll have one more to do. So what I'm gonna do, first I'm gonna save this as what it is. So I know this is how to turn in an assignment. So I'm gonna copy that really quick because I'm gonna go file, save as, and I'm gonna save it in that same assignments folder, but I'm gonna put make a doc, doc folder for it as soon as it opens up. So I'm in that assignments folder. Now I'm just going to create a new one called doc because that's where we're going to save all of these. And I'm going to just be my full name dash and then the assignment name and make sure it's saying dot doc right here. And all we have to do is hit save and that's what we'll actually upload for our assignment right there. So we're going to, I'm going to make this a template template. Now, now I have a copy of that saved. So I'm just going to say, I'm gonna delete this, delete this. And we can leave the time thing because we just go in there and delete it just so you know it's time. And you can't just put, you know, full name and everything, but I think it's self-explanatory if we have it already filled in there just to put it there like you would on a handwritten document here. So I'm going to come up here and go file, save as. And I'm actually going to save this as a template. So I'm going to scroll down and we have open office template. So see right here, O O T T well, O T T. And I'm just going to go save. I'm just going to leave it. Uh, well, let's just call this template. It doesn't need to be that long. And you can go in here and change this later, but anything that you don't want to keep typing, just put it in your template so it's ready, or at least just so you have the format to go. So I'm going to save the template. Now I want to close this and reopen it because right now I can edit it. Once, it. once I go to the template part of that, I can't edit that. It'll say save as new every time, which is kind of nice. So right here it shows the template one I just created as recent. I'm going to go in the documents so we can see everything I just did. So there's our picture right there, our screenshot that I saved just as a backup, and I can organize that and just say, hey, back, you know, screenshots. And here's my template, and here's the actual assignment. So the template, I can open it, and I can do the next assignment. So it's all ready to go. So all I'd have to do is I could double click on that, and I can change the date. And I can come right here and I can just say, all right, my next assignment. Uh, actually, no, we'll do hyper V. Hyper V screenshot. How's that work? And all we're going to do for that one is I'm just going to open up Hyper-V. And since I don't have it down here because I haven't moved it since I changed the counts, so let me remember to do that. So Hyper-V, and I'm going to pin it down there. I'm going to pin, pin the taskbar. Now it's down there. 
I can open up here every time. And that'll be my screenshot right there. So I can minimize this in the background. I don't need that. So why do I want to see this as a screenshot? Because it shows that you changed your computer name right there and that you have Hyper-V installed. So I'm going to come over here. Screenshot again. And I'm just going to click the full screen one. You can hit print screen. I just want a full screen screenshot. Now it's on the clipboard. I'm going to come over here and hopefully it works because I'm. it's always when you're trying to show someone something, something doesn't want to work. And then that's it right there. And then since this is the name of the document, I probably spelled screenshot wrong, right? I did have it two words at first. You know, I did. Whatever. English is not my primary language. It's mumble rap. All right. File. Save as. Now, an easy way to cheat is just click on one you already had. And then just highlight the end of this and paste what the new assignment is. Then hit save. So now I have two assignments I can turn in. Is that clear? Is that good? And then I'll have examples of what we'll, we'll put in this bottom part later. I might have you, you know, write in a tutorial under there, but this is just so it's ready to go and easy. So we all, we have a standardized format, trying to keep it simple, stupid. And then what I didn't show you is I'll close that really quick and I'll go back into there. So if I open up that template, and I try to hit save, it's not going to let me. So you actually have to go save. So when I hit save right there, it's going to let me do it save as. It'll save a brand new one, see? So that's that's why we got the templates. So we don't actually accidentally save on top of our other stuff. All right. So I'm going to end this video at this point because I think this is good for the day. And then I'll get this uploaded, and then we can walk people through everything who might be lost. Uh, PM class kind of gets the advantage because they don't have to wait for the video to render. But you guys get the fresh me with the morning brain with coffee in it. All right, let me stop this. Open recorder.